675, out of level 6, zero for 100. 775, count to flight level 200. Time 200, zero and 675. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and to a new episode of Airbus A320 Simulator Series. In this episode we will look into the procedures of cockpit preparation. By the way, the previous two videos were on preliminary cockpit preparation and the exterior walk-around of A320. If you have missed, check it out from the iCard suggestion in the top corner. So guys, as we see our cockpit is powered up and we are done with our prelims. For the preparation, we are going to follow the standard panel scan sequence. Purpose of the scan is to test few systems, enable few and extinguish white lights. Starting with overhead panel, Airbus has philosophy of all white lights out, so let's do it. Starting with crew supply on, this opens the solenoid valve of our oxygen system. Then we switch on ground control for CVR test. For the CVR test, ensure that the parking brake is on, ACP interact switch on interphone and interphone reception knob out. Then press and maintain test PB. And there we have the test signal. Moving on to the ground proximity warning system, we have two fault lights, which is okay since we are parked on ground and our systems are not powered. Emergency electrical power panel looks good. On the evac panel, we'll toggle the switch to captain and purser. Well, the operating policy on this can differ from airline to airline. This toggle position, in addition to the cockpit, gives the authority to initiate the evac command from the cabin if required. Our flight control computers are looking good. Next is our air data inertial reference system which further has three ADRU, air data inertial reference units. Each unit then has two components inertial reference and air data reference and in short brief for the inertial reference which uses ring laser gyro as technology computes various parameters like aircraft position, attitude, track, flight path vector, ground speed and heading of the aircraft as output. While on the other hand Air data reference component helps us with other parameters like barometric altitude, overspeed warnings, angle of attack, airspeed, temperature and Mach. Now for the alignment we will set each unit to nav in the sequence. Assuming this is the first flight of the day, I am going to do the full alignment. Starting with unit 1 on nav. We have on bat light because IRS is being supplied by aircraft batteries. Now wait for it to extinguish. We do the same with second unit on bat light wait for it to extinguish unit 3 on nav by the way on bat enunciator lights up for 5 seconds so based on our current latitude it should take about 5 to 7 minutes for the alignment meanwhile we will continue the scan external lighting strobe lights on auto of course beacon lights off for now nav lights on we are yet to refuel so no seat belts for now no smoking to auto arm the emergency lights Check landing elevation on auto. Probe and window heat is on auto. Anti icing is off. Next is our air conditioning panel, which we have already set. We'll switch on back to as well. Okay, moving to the electrical panel, we see that we have fault lights on both our generators, which is again absolutely fine since our engines are not up and running. We'll test batteries now, and for that, we will call our electrical page on eCAM system display. Now we will just switch off and on the batteries. Battery 1 and 2 off. And on. This initiates the charging cycle of the batteries. After 10 seconds of selecting both the batteries on, check charge of batteries below 60 amps and is decreasing. Which is the case here. We will leave our fuel pumps off since we are yet to refuel. Mode selector on auto checked. Our hydraulic panel looks good, no fault. Now we'll perform fire tests for both our engines. Check fire push button in and guarded. Check agent 1 squib and discharge light off. Check agent 2 squib and discharge light off. Now press and maintain test push button. Check squib and discharge light on for both the agents. Red fire push light on. CRC on. Check engine 1 fire warning on ECAM. Check fire light on on engine master panel. Check master warning, reset and CRC goes off. Now we can release the test push button. Fire test for engine 2. Engine 2 fire push button in and guarded. Both agent squib and discharge light check off. Now press and maintain test push button. Both agent squib and discharge light check on. Red fire push light on. CRC. Check engine 2 fire warning on ECAM. On engine master panel check fire light on. 
reset the master warning and CRC goes off. So we are done with our engine fire test. Then we see our audio switching is on normal. Then moving to the right of the overhead panel, there's nothing much here. Ventilation is good, cargo smoke is good, cargo heat as required based on your cargo. Our flight control computers are good here. Moving on to RMP3, check no nav green, it's set to VHF3 which is dedicated to our A cars. Then on our third ACP, PA reception out. This enables recording of cabin announcements on CVR. Then we go up, checking the maintenance panel for any popped out circuit breaker and check for any white lights. On the left side we see our fixed ELT is armed. Then on the cockpit door control panel we check for any strike light or any channel light on. Well in short brief we have three locking mechanism in cockpit door locking system which we refer as strikes. In case a fault is detected with any of the mechanism the respective light comes on. These two pressure sensors does the auto unlatching of the door when the pressure drop is detected. And if there's a fault with any of these sensors respective channel light comes on. Ok guys moving on we'll head to our center instrument panel which is second in the scan sequence. In here we'll start with the integrated standby instrument system. We can set the brightness as required. We check the barrel reference which is 1013. The attitude and altitude is also correct. Our DDRMI looks good. No flags. Check accumulator brake pressure is in green band. We'll set the clock to GPS. And we check our anti-skid and nose wheel steering is on. Coming down to the pedestal, we first have our MCDU which we are going to talk about in detail in the next episode of FMGS preparation. Before we continue with the scan further, we'll check aircraft status on MCDU. For that press data key first. Then line select key for aircraft status. Now we can see our aircraft type, our engine type and of course we should be knowing this before we enter the aircraft. Then we check the validity of nav database which is current. But I am sure this video is going to come much after this date, so excuse me for that. Next we have our radio management panel. We check for no nav green light, no cell light. VHF1 is selected. Then we can tune into the ground frequency, which for today is 120.550. Then we'll transfer it to active. Then on the AC pull the reception knob out as required. Now coming to weather radar, we see that the system is off. Gain is set on calibrated. Multi scan on auto, clutter suppresses on auto. Tilt angle zero for now. Predictive windshield is off. Weather in turbulence mode set. Speed brake is retracted and disarmed. Okay, so after checking the normal operation of cockpit door physically and mechanical ride operation, which I can't do it here on the simulator, we will check the electrical operation. As we see, we have the open annuator light on. Now toggle the switch to lock position. Open light goes off. Now toggle unlock. We also have a fault indicator which comes on when the system failure is detected. And of course it's imperative to check that as well. For that we need to head to the overhead panel and switch on our indicator test. Now with this we have all the indicator lights on throughout the flight deck. Coming back to our cockpit door panel, we see we have fault light now. We can switch the test off. By the way with the test on we also check that our three cockpit door strike lights comes on which is not simulated here unfortunately. Now let's finally switch off the test. Back to the pedestal on the switching panel we see that all switches are on normal. Set the ECAM brightness if required. Check our throttle levers are idle, engine master switch is both off, engine mode selected normal, rudder trim is zero and the parking brake is set and we have about 2000 psi on the brake pressure indicator and the gravity gear extension is stored then on the right side of the pedestal I will set this MCDU to AOC menu for now for the coordination with our operational center then on our RMP2 we see no nav green light no cell light and it is set to VHF2 which is preferred for company frequencies or ATIS let's tune into our ATIS frequency for some terminal information update We'll set the reception knobs as required. Then we move to our TCAS and ATC panel. Here our transponder is on standby. We'll switch on altitude reporting. System 1 is set as the pilot flying is on the left seat. Hence we would want ADR1 to give out the data. Also only system 1 will be available in case of emergency electrical configuration. And our TCAS is on standby. And finally our flap lever is set to zero. 
so that was all for this episode guys now we are done with our cockpit preparation in the next episode we will prepare the fmgs wherein we will look into multifunction control display unit initialization our glare shield and lateral consoles all right guys if you like my videos do hit like subscribe share and support the channel thank you for watching and see you until the next time